Hello friends. Now today we are going to see the kinematics of mechanism, in which we are dealing with the links, its uh, types, and its orientation. So, what do you mean by kinematic link? So, link is nothing but it is the rigid body which is mainly used to transmit the motion and forces without any deformation. Means there will be no deformation by transmitting the motion and forces. So this is called as kinematic link. So there are uh, three types of links. Uh, one is rigid link, another one is flexible link, and third one is the fluid link. So rigid link is nothing but the same as that of kinematic link. That is, it is the rigid member or redundant member, which is used to transmit the motion forces without any deformation. And flexible link means here it is also same. It is also used to transmit the motion and forces. But in this link, there will be some deformation. But after doing its operations, such as transmitting the motion forces, it can again link in its position. Means such type of examples for the flexible link, it is nothing but the belt drive system. Is more this, this is the best example for the flexible link. Second is your spring, which can be compressed while transmit the motion, and when the motion is transmitted then it can again regain its original shape and size. So these are the examples of the flexible link. And fluid link is nothing but the hydraulic pressure. We are using the hydraulic pressure, fluid pressure for transmitting the motion and forces. So such type of links we are using in JCB and other actuators, hydraulic actuators or pneumatic actuators. So now, what are the types of rigid link? So these are the three basic types of rigid link. So here, if you see, this is the binary link in which there are two ends. So in these two ends, we can join the other links. Then this is the terminal links. As the name indicates, there will be three points for connecting the other links. And last, quaternary link, where these links can be connected at the four points. So these are the classification of the rigid link, binary, ternary, and quaternary. So what are kinematic chains? So kinematic chain is nothing but it is the combination of kinematic pairs and a combination of kinematic pairs will form the combination of mechanisms and then this combination of mechanism is nothing but what it is the kinematic chain. So in this kinematic chain it is classified into two types one is open kinematic chain another one is closed kinematic chain. So if you see here in this open kinematic chain so this is the one end of the chain and this is the other end. So both of these ends, they are not connecting to each other. So they are free. So it is called as open kinematic chain. But here, if you see in closed kinematic chain, so one end is attached to the substrate and the other dead end of this pair, it is also connected to the same substrate. So such type of chain is called as the closed kinematic chain. So this is the basic difference between open kinematic chain and the closed kinematic chain. And the chain may be of uh, same links or it is a Compound means it may be a similar kinetic chain or a compound kinetic chain. In similar, we will be having same links nature, and in compound, it will be having a combination of ternary, binary, or quaternary, depending upon the configuration. Also, what are joints? So, in this part, first is binary joint. So, in this joint, we there will be two binary links. So Binary joint is formed by a combination of two kinetic two binary link. Then terminal joint, it is the combination of three links which are connected at one point. And quaternary, it is nothing but it is the combination of joining of four links at one single point. So these joints are called as binary, where the two links are joined at one point. In ternary, where three links are joined at one end. And in quaternary, where four links are joined at one end. So these are the basic types of joints. So what are the types of motions that a link in a pair is forming? So there are three types of motions. One is constrained motion. Second is incompletely constrained motion. And third is successfully constrained motion. So we will see in detail of all these three types of motion. So this is constrained motion. So if you see here, there is one rectangular bar and one rectangular slab is there, which is having a rectangular cavity. So this rectangular block, it is having a sliding motion inside that rectangular slot, means in that slab. So in this case, there will be only sliding motion 
and there will be no any other motion in this kinetic pair. So such type of motion where it is taking place in one definite direction or it is there will be only one single motion. So such type of motion are called as constraint motion. So the best example of this constraint motion is your IC engine where the piston or slider will be having sliding motion inside the cylinder. So this is the best example of the constraint motion. Second one is the incompletely constraint motion. So what is in, happening in this incompletely constraint motion? Here, if you see, there is one moving element that we can call it as a shaft, and another one is the fixed element. So here, as the shaft or moving element is rotating, so there will be two motion. One will be rotary, and another will be translatory or sliding. So such type of motion where it where more than one motion is existing. So such type of motion is called as incompletely constrained motion. The next successfully constrained motion. So what is happening in the successfully constrained motion? As you see in incompletely constrained motion, the motion will take place in more than one direction. But if you want to take that motion in only one direction, then by providing some restriction in that system, we can make that motion from two to one. So such type of motion, while putting some restriction, so such type of motion is called as successfully constrained motion. So these are the kinetic pairs. So first kinetic pair is the revolute pair. Then second is the prismatic, or we can see it as a sliding pair. Then third is the screw pair, which we are seeing in between nut and bolt system. The next is cylindrical pair. We can also see it as a rolling pair. The revolute pair is a thing, but it is a turning pair. The spherical pair we can call it as a globular pair, and last is the planar. Okay. So in next slide we will see the animation of the kinetic pairs. In chapter one, topic A, we defined a mechanism as a set of links connected with kinematic pairs that transmit and modify motion and forces. Now we'll take a closer look at kinematic pairs themselves. Here we have a collection of kinematic pairs. As the name suggests, any kinematic pair is made up of two bodies shown in red and green here. These two bodies are capable of moving relative to each other, like this. So one body can be considered fixed and then the motion of the other body can be started. Each of these bodies can then be connected to a different link. So as the two bodies move relative to each other, the two links will also move relative to each other. Next, we will name these pairs one by one. So here, we have a prismatic solid sliding in a prismatic cavity. So this is called as a prismatic pair or a sliding pair. Next, we have one body rotating inside the other. So this is called a revolute pair or a turning pair. In the third case, we have a nut in which a bolt is engaging. So this is called as a screw pair. Or if you look at this projection, which is helical, and it is engaging with a helical groove, so it is also called as a helical pair. The fourth one is commonly called as a ball joint, but in kinematics, we will call this a spherical pair or a globular pair. And that is owing to its shape, the cavity and the solid that engages in it. Finally, we have these two pairs where one body is following the motion of another body with special shape or profile. Such pairs are called cams and followers. To recap, there is a prismatic or sliding pair, revolute or turning pair, helical or screw pair, and globular or spherical pair. Now let us see how to classify them. One criteria for classification could be 
what keeps the two bodies together? If it is their shape, like over here, a prismatic solid is engaging in a prismatic cavity, a cylinder engaging in a cylindrical cavity or a, a helix engaging in a, a helical cavity and so on. So if the two bodies are kept together by virtue of uh, their shape, then they are called as a form closed pair. But if the two are kept together by virtue of some external force, like that exerted by the spring here, or by the sheer weight or gravity, then such pair is called a force closed pair. Finally, the last classification is according to the contact between two bodies. Here the contact is made all over the surface, the prismatic surface. Here the contact uh, is across a cylindrical surface or a helical surface or a spherical surface. So when we have a spherical contact, uh, surface contact, they are called lower pairs. When in this case, the contact is occurring only along a line or a point. So such pairs are called as higher pairs. Thank you.